remember. That's autocomplete on email. All right, so this is where we started. This was within hours of the earthquake. Most of you have seen this, if not all of you. And this is what it originally looked like. This 725 square mile area that we took action on, and there are 30 seven wells in our area of jurisdiction, and there were 30, 17 wells in the EPA's area of jurisdiction that we took action on. Everything we say today, unless otherwise noted, pertains to our area of jurisdiction, and we'll point out, we have been working with the EPA, and the map you'll see, and the maps you have on your handout, and for those on the phone, I have emailed the, um, the documentation on this, an advisory and a map, and a list of operators. So this is where we are right now with our latest action. Charles and his folks began notifying operators about this today, and we'll go into more detail. I'm going to ask Dr. Boak first to step up to explain why the change and in particular, if this is the focus and what this means, Dr. Bowen. Well, the simplest answer is we got more data. This has always been the issue that every new piece of data can change our view of what's actually happening out there. Um, and it is not surprising that we're discovering new faults. Um, we've been doing that kind of all through this process of, of seeing the evolving earthquake pattern. A number of the faults that, as we get our most precise locations of these earthquakes, they're showing us new faults. That's not necessarily surprising because many of these faults have been inactive for hundreds of millions of years. The blue line that's there, uh, is that part of the old fault that, that, you're, that I'm looking at? The red is the new? Is that what that is? That was the original one. Yeah, yeah that, this, this was the fault that originally just didn't shown on our recent fault, fault plane map. Um, and this is the new one that's really been defined by the earthquakes we're seeing here. And of course, this extension here is uh, simply conceptual at this point. Okay, so the blue line actually extends a long ways down, doesn't it? I mean, that's, that's part of an old fault that goes up into Kansas and all the way down to Oklahoma County. Well, can we back up? Did we lose somebody? Uh, can we? We're barely hearing you on the phone. All right, well. Barely hearing the questioners or the answer? Anything? Can't hear the speakers. Either. Okay. Bob, remember, use that mic. All right. Okay. Can we back up to the to the old slide because it, it shows more of these fault segments. What we have is here was the original fault segment, and it, there are a variety of additional faults in there. So this is the segment that was concentrated on in the initial action. Right. With. With some attention to the extensions yeah. to the north. We did follow this, this line, but this is uh, this is the Omnimedia mic. Uh, this is the primary fault section here. This is the optimally aligned section. These are suboptimal, and these do continue down from Logan County and up into Kansas. But the, the orientation. This is obviously subsequently from the seismic event. This is the this is the fault that was in focus. Charles, why don't you run down what our response is now? Uh, initially, I mean, Saturday morning, the size of the event was approximately 7 o'clock. It was 5.8. 5 um, we were at the office at approximately 8.30. Um, we, we currently have tools that we can work with now that we did not have previously. And we were, what took us uh, basically eight hours to put together would have taken us two weeks at another time. Uh, we took this line. On the, we took this line on the suboptimal fault line. We buffered off of this. Whoever is on the phone speaking into the phone, you're reading. Those, those answers, we got more data. 
This has always been the issue that any new piece of data change the viewer that's actually happening. Whoever is on the phone who is playing back a tape of this news conference, please stop. Please make sure all your phones are in mute unless you're asking a question. All right, let's try it. Sorry, folks. Okay, as I was saying, along this particular line. process of seeing the evolving earthquake pattern, a number of the faults that as we get our most. Thank you. Uh, as I was saying, we buffered along this line. We, we drew out from magnitude 5a. We then buffered, and this is how we came up with our uh, area of shut-in. And there were uh, 37 wells in this location in Oklahoma. There were 17 wells located in our area of jurisdiction. And we we'll point out we have the EPA and the MAPLC and the MAPC have. On your hand off the Folks, we have no choice but to cut the phone because of what someone is doing. So, the dial back in. We separated. This is the area that's uh, EPA jurisdiction. This is part of Osage County. Uh, the tribes have uh, all of the royalty and, and part of the land, but the EPA, BIA, and the BLM are responsible for this area here. Uh, we got out our directive uh, that, that evening at 6 o'clock. This is kind of a case where we were able to react very fast and subsequent information uh, we were we needed to modify. Can we go to the next slide? Uh, this is the line, this is the uh, optimally line fault that you saw earlier. I've not put the fault on this map for clarity. There's a, quite a bit going on here. But we have actually drawn these lines in. Uh, there's very little doubt in my mind that uh, there is a fault here simply because we've had seismic events. We did buffer off this purple line and in this area, this is what we have designated to have all wells shut in and the areas that have been bumped out by our former uh, buffer area, these wells were having a reduction in volume for them. Uh, but this is based upon subsequent aftershocks that has occurred. But this is what we're doing to protect these two faults from uh, undue influence from injection. Uh, yes, sir. Where did this new fault data come from? Came from the earthquakes. Uh, we received, we had, we, we get from uh, Oklahoma Geological Survey a catalog. Then they also take that data and they refine the seismic events, what we call the HypoDD. And what you're seeing here are the HypoDDs. These are corrected position, they're corrected as to latitude, longitude, and they're corrected on the z axis as to depth. Uh, usually, we most, most of the time, if we have it available, any directive we use will be based on the HypoDD. Um. Question is: Is this regulatory authority or change coming in response to discovering a new fault line? Yes. Can you give some clarity around the um, the actual volume reduction? Uh, it's, it says in the news release here 40,000 barrels a day, but what is that compared to before, and what percentage reduction is that? I'm going to hand this over to the numbers guy. The total reduction is. Yeah, the total reduction is uh, approximately 40,000 barrels. Uh, the original previous five weeks average daily volume totaled about 75,000 barrels. So the uh, total is 53.8%, uh, I believe. Sorry, could you clarify that? Uh, so 75,000 75, barrels a day is, is 
what you were, uh, what was getting pumped in. Now it's down to forty thousand, right? Yeah, that is correct. Seventy-five thousand was the previous previous average, and uh, currently it's thirty-five. Thirty-five thousand. Do you know which producing formation most of these wells were coming out of? Is it, is it Mississippian or other types of uh, production? I don't know for certain uh, which all of these are because it is a kind of a merging point between the Mississippi Clay and the Older Clay off to the east. Is, is this reduction less than what was initially put out right after the Clay? Is it less than what was put out after the Clay? I'm not sure the total numbers of volume because we didn't have that available at the time. The total reduction, most of, well, several of the wells being shut in had not been injecting for the past five weeks, so I'm, I'm not sure what the total volume of the original 37 wells was as opposed to the 48 wells. Just want to point out, uh, initially it was a uh, <coughs> Shut in of 37 wells. Subsequently, we were uh, shutting in uh, 27, but we have 48 total, uh, which would give us uh, 13, 13 of reduction. Uh, I'd also like to note that the EPA has been very cooperative in giving us, make, giving us access to their data. And in fact, this map was made in conjunction with the EPA as we sat at the earthquake conference down at OU. We were all in the back row with our laptops working over these maps and discussing our, uh, our actions and in con conversation with, with Dr. Boak and Jefferson Chang. So this was basically done on the fly at the uh, earthquake conference in Norman. Have any of these wells actually started to shut down or reduce their volumes? Has that actually, has that process begun? Or are we still slowly, you know, doing this process over time? Um, some of them have been shut down. The volume reduction will take place. And again, I'll turn this over to Jim for timing. Yeah, with, the, with the initial action, the 39, the 37 wells, if they were within a five-mile buffer of the line that was drawn at that time, they were to shut in by Saturday, this past Saturday. Those wells have shut in. The rest of the wells were to shut in by uh, the 13th tomorrow, and those are being directed to, if they're supposed to shut in, still shut in. Otherwise, the reduction begins, and they must reach their 25% reduction by the uh, 26th of September over a two-week period. And each operator is allowed to pool their total volumes for their wells in that area, and that's reduced by 25 percent. And they can move it around, however, however suits their system, but depending on what kind of pipe work they have in place and all. Is this the first time the Corporation Commission has acted uh, based on fault data and not just quake quake data? I guess I would say. We presume that the presence of an earthquake represents the presence of a fault. These are not new faults occurring. So in essence, yeah, there's always a fault. So their action has always been based on, on activity on faults. Sometimes it was a, a relatively small number of earthquakes, but it's always been based on faults. So in layman's terms, I mean, what, what do you expect that this increased regulation or whatever it is will, will do um, for the public? Uh, we, we are hoping to mitigate seismicity. We certainly do not want to see another uh, earthquake of this magnitude occur in this area. Uh, and on an earlier question, someone was talking about the production. There is old Red Fork production in this area, and there's also Mississippi. A lot of the older Arbuckle wells, we're not really injecting that much, uh, although if we take the bathtub approach to this, uh, everyone is adding to the bathtub, and what we're trying to do by the restriction and by the shut-ins is to stop filling the bathtub up as quickly. Is there any concern on your guys' part, especially Dr. Boak, uh, that injection wells outside of this area might still be influencing this? In other words, seepage, so to speak? 
in general, we see this as a regional problem. We don't have direct correlation from individual wells to individual earthquakes. It's really seen as creating a, a broad scale pulse of pressure that makes it way, its way down into the basement. And it isn't any one well that's responsible. But you can, in fact, influence it by the actions we're taking here. We have seen a drop of about uh, somewhat over a million barrels a day in injection in the 14 or 15 counties that are really seeing 97 to 98 percent of the earthquakes. And we've also seen a drop of uh, about a third in the 180 day moving average of earthquakes above magnitude 2.8 plus over the past year. So we see this as um, the, the closest thing we have to a smoking gun in support of the, the, the generally accepted interpretation here. It may be a very long time before we can figure out a way to establish uh, a clear and connected pathway between the Arbuckle group and five and a half kilometers down where most of these earthquakes are occurring. But the correlation in, in, in the rise and the correlation in the decline is the best explanation. The best explanation for that is that the two are related and that the decline in earthquakes is a result of a decline in injection in the area of interest. Can you clarify if any of these wells are commercial disposal wells, high volume disposal wells, more than 25,000 barrels a day, either in OCC's jurisdiction and or in Osage County and EPA's jurisdiction? Thanks. I can't comment on the EPA wells. The Osage County wells don't know what, what the volumes are up there. The highest volume well in this area was injecting less than 10,000 barrels a day average. Commercial or, or non-commercial doesn't make a difference in, in when we're taking the action, so I don't don't really know the answer to that. I don't think there are any from looking at the list, but there, there could be one or two in there that are designated commercial. Um, with this one being the first kind of mandatory reduction order, um, what's the kind of feedback you've gotten back from some of the companies involved? Most of the companies have been that we've been involved with. Uh, one of them actually said, "I, I thought you'd call me sooner." Uh, they're they're kind of stunned, but they're very polite and they're very cooperative, and and they realize that what we're doing is a, is an absolute necessity. We've had I haven't had anyone be necessarily ugly to me at any point in time during this process. Does this old fault line have a name? Sorry. Not yet. Is the new one, you're going to name the new one the Lord Fault or something? I'm, I'm hoping not. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> I'm curious about uh, what kind of injection data you have for Pawnee County generally over the last few years. Has Do, do you know if there's been an increase in the amount of uh, wastewater that's being injected and oil and gas activity in, in Pawnee County? Yeah, I'm sure there has been an increase. Uh, we can we can probably give you some firm numbers later if you'd like. Over the last few years. Uh, and, and we can we can give you specific numbers uh, pertaining to the Arbuckle. Uh, the remaining is it, those those volume reports come in annually so we can tell you what happened last year and we can tell you what happened in 2015, but unless it's an Arbuckle well, it won't be up to the minute uh, volume data. But the Arbuckle wells are what you're most concerned with, right? Yes, and, and these are the wells that are sending daily reports on a weekly basis. Can you, can you guys describe the Arbuckle in this area? Is, how does it compare to Arbuckle uh, in, in areas where we've had other actions? Any similarities, any differences? That's a subject for extensive study, and we're in the midst of trying to understand what we know about the regional variations of the various subunits, the various formations of the Arbuckle. It's, uh, it's an area of active research now. But, but nothing obvious or that stands out from right now? No, nothing right. stands out. What, actually, Pawnee County was fairly consistently ninth or tenth on our list of counties for average monthly injection over the past, over the years from 2011 through 2014. And I don't recall seeing a particularly large increase compared to, say, Alfalfa or, or one of the counties that are really the, the top level injectors. Okay. Um, stand by. 
folks, I'm sorry, you know, you guys made the trouble of being here and one uh, apple on the phone screwed it up, but I'm told by the people who are listening in right now that he has stopped, whoever he or she is, and so we're going to try to reestablish for the people on the line, because there are a great, great many of them. Okay, folks on the phone, we're going to try to reestablish. We are going to try to reestablish on the phone. Uh, we had to cut the connection because someone was uh, trying to cut up audio as they went, and it was playing over the phone. Please put your phone on mute unless you have a question. Tim Baker, are you there? I'm still here. All right, so... Um, if anyone has a question for Tim, who is director of the Oil and Gas Division, and he is the person who makes the decision as to what the action plan should be, including in this room, including uh, on the phone, go ahead. I have a question for Tim Baker. Tim, this is Sarah with the Journal Record. Where is the EPA in all of this? this? You say this is a collaborative effort. Is the EPA going to release a list of wells and well names and vo uh, volumes and pressures and all that? I, I haven't seen anything like that related to this specific action. It took them six days to release the information from Saturday's quake. Um, uh, yes, EPA has been working with us since uh, within two hours of the 5.8. Uh, we were in contact uh, with our uh, state coordinator, in addition to the uh, uh, that portion of EPA, the base of EPA that runs Osage County. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you all know by now uh, the Osage tribe owns the minerals, and the BIA is delegated the jurisdiction, the oversight of the uh, enforcement and allocation of the uh, minerals of Osage County. I call it a mineral reservation. They sold the land off, the surface off, years ago that Congress allowed them to maintain the minerals. So when the UIC program came along, uh, EPA was uh, authorized to run the UIC program in Osage County. And the UIC program is underground injection control, so all underground injection is regulated by EPA in Osage County. Uh, this program has been around since 1986. Uh, Oklahoma's program has been around since 1981, uh, and we we've, we've, uh, typically do not have a whole lot in common, but in this case, uh, with the area of influence, uh, a portion of it in Osage County, we were calling Osage, or we were calling EPA for the wells in Osage County so we could make a coordinated effort uh, to uh, uh, mediate this situation. Tim, this is Charles. I'd like to add, we were in communication with Nancy Dorsey, EPA Region 6 in Dallas, on Saturday, and she sat with us uh, during the uh, seismic conference at OU. We had the laptop. We were up on the third, third row, and uh, she was assisting us. She was pulling data down from people in Dallas that were, who were accumulating the, uh, the information. Uh, we've been taking... Uh, daily volumes in our buckle wells for, for quite a while. And uh, the Osage County, they're still on annual volumes, so they're putting that data together. They have indicated to us that whatever we do, they will mirror that on the Osage County side. As a follow-up question, as far as the, in, the public records are concerned, are they providing you this data, the same data you're providing to us and all these other 76 counties? Are they giving that information to you? Oh, they, they will. We haven't received it yet. But if they're mirroring what we're doing, then this is just this is one thing we don't have to worry about at this point in time. We're, we're focused on, on our data, our wells, and the actions that we're needing to take. I have a question. Um, you said that many of the, several of the wells that were shut in hadn't been injecting for the past five weeks. Um, what does that say about the timing of, 
of when these wells would be injecting into the ground in relation to seismicity. If they hadn't been injecting for five weeks and then we had an earthquake, maybe what does that shed light on what will happen you know, with the seismicity in this area now since you're reducing volume and, and shutting in wells? Does that give us a better time frame of, of when the seismicity might stop? No, the only, the only reason I used the five weeks that they hadn't been injecting is that's the interval we looked at to determine the average that they had been using if they had been injecting. So for the past five weeks, we took the daily average for each well. And there were several that hadn't injected. A lot of those have not injected for a year or more. A lot of them were permitted, drilled, completed, but have never been used. I just meant, what does that mean, um, you know, in relation to the seismic activity if they hadn't been, you know, injecting for five weeks or even a year in the area where the earthquake happened? We just came back from a seismic conference and there was a very very smart young lady, much smarter than I am, who was convinced that uh, stopping injection uh, was not a, uh, a not a trigger for seismicity. That, that's all I can tell you. And I believe that was the direction of your question, talking about how they had shut in. Possibly was that a trigger, or that might have induced seismicity. I was just thinking, in, you know, in my own uh, plain mind, if if you had if these, you know wells had been stopped and not, you know, been injecting for five weeks and then however many, you know, two or three weeks later we had this giant earthquake. I'm just wondering how all of this, you know, timing wise will affect the rest of the seismic activity. I think that generally what we're seeing is a very broad response to a very broad pulse of, of injected water it is declining fairly steadily because of the million barrel a day reduction we've already seen. So individual fluctuations of individual wells, I don't think have a huge amount to do with, with that. Okay. Um, we did have some concerns back at Christmas when we had a power outage in which a lot of wells went down and then they all came back online at exactly the same time. And two days we, later we had magnitude four earthquakes on the Galena Township Fault. We don't know how realistic that is. We still don't know. There's not really a good model that enable you to model such a large region and determine whether such a, a pulse of activity could make the difference. But it was enough to concern the Corporation Commission. In general, we're talking about broad response, uh, broad area response to the, the substantial rise in injection. I mean, we rose at least, a, I think it was at least a doubling over the course of four, uh, the three or four years, 2011 through 2014. I believe that 2015 total numbers are actually slightly off, but they're still being vetted. There's a lot of uh, quality checks have to be done on the, on the annual data because it's so many wells. Um, so we don't actually have the 2015 data digested in a way that people are, feel comfortable putting out there yet. So s some of the wells that were... Hey, can I ask a two-point question? Sure, would you mind holding up for a second? Go ahead on the phone. Nancy Dorsey was there for the, for the whole conference. Um, I think she may have been the only one there. Oh, no, this press conference. This press conference. That I don't know. Not that I'm aware of, ma'am. Yeah, it's here, okay. Uh, second question, I kept hearing that there was, like, there was a, a new fault, I think the term activated was used by somebody at USPS, and then was hearing that it runs all the way through Osage County. So I just kind of wondered if we were going to see, you know, uh, restrictions going further east into east or northeast into Osage. Is that, is that not the way it is or not credible or not warranted? Or I've seen nothing that war warrants that conclusion. I'd be happy to know who your source is. Okay. I, it wasn't a secret source. It's, it's more than a general sense I got over a couple days. I, I can't pin it down. So there is not some fault running all the way through Osage County. No, we've shown the epicenters we've got. No hidden, no hidden earthquakes here, and, and no pre-existing major fault. We are going to have a meeting later today to talk about different drawings of that fault. We've, we had several before, and we've actually had someone contact us who's looked at some of the faulting in the area. He'd like to talk about, we'd like to talk that over and make sure we've got it represented correctly, but um, as far as I'm concerned, no, there's nothing that suggests a uh, major through going fault that is being outlined by these additional epicenters. This is the Edward.
Thank you. Ask a question. Yeah, go ahead, Ziva. Um, so, is it interesting that you all do not have any data from EPA on well locations, well volumes, well operators? Still? We don't have we don't have volumes. We don't have volumes on them. We do have the locations that are on the map. Uh, we know we know the locations. Why? They're, they're gathering that data. They only do an annual report, so they're, they're gathering those data together. They will be sending it to us as soon as they have it. Uh, this is Tim Baker. I want to make it clear. EPA did get us a listing of all of the wells uh, uh, that we believe sh should be within the area of interest. What we don't have is the actual volume data. It's in hard copy files. It's annual data. And it, that's going to take a little longer for us to receive that information. We do know what wells will be shut in, and we do know what wells will be reduced by 25%. What we don't know is what those volumes are exactly. Some of the wells that were shut in uh, uh, after the quake on Saturday are being allowed to resume injecting. That's correct. If they were if they were outside the new buffer along the, the new orientation of the, the fault that's being mapped out and they're outside that 10 mile buffer there are wells that will be coming back online if they had already shut in most of those would not have been required to shut in by Saturday so they could still be operational prior prior to today there will be some that were initially listed as a shut in well that are now being reduced instead and that's Jim Jim or that Can, it, can you? Question. Oh, I was going to ask if you could just kind of sum up um, what what the old restrictions are versus the new like numbers, so that you can put it in a comparison. How many wells were shut down um, in the first round, and how many are shut down now? There were 37 shut in in the first in the first directive in the 10 miles uh, southwest or northeast of the 5.8. We'll put the buffer around that. Anything within that was shut in. If there were five miles, they were shut in by Saturday the 10th. If not, the, they were to be shut in by the 13th. There are now 27 wells under OCC jurisdiction that are shut in, and there's another 21 that are reduced 25% from what their volumes were. What about EPA? EPA has five wells that are shut in under the new directive and they had on the list we had at the time there were 17 and they now have uh, 20 wells as of Saturday's information.